My guest tonight had the experience of being in the courtroom during some of the Libby trial. In fact, he made history just by being there. Lance Dutson is a blogger who was allowed to cover the trial because for the first time ever in a federal criminal trial, bloggers were credentialed alongside traditional reporters. Sure sign that the way we cover news is changing drastically. Lance, welcome. Thanks for being Thanks, here. Jeff. It's great to be were here. Were you nervous? Um, a little bit at first, but it was a pretty controlled atmosphere. Um, it was it was not as nerve-wracking as I thought it would be. Now, that was after about almost four years of negotiation with uh, the uh, Bloggers Association to get several of you accredited. How were you accepted by the members of the mainstream media? Did they think it was unique? Did they look down their noses at you? Or? Actually, there was almost no um, no difference between the bloggers from our organization and um, and the mainstream media folks that were in the room. It was a very uh, uh, friendly atmosphere and, um, and I didn't see any kind of uh, snobbishness by the mainstream media or uh, you know contentiousness from from bloggers. What did you think of the whole experience? You were there during Tim Russert's testimony, and that got a lot of play, both on, on blogs and, of course, in the mainstream media. Sure. Well, it was fascinating to watch, and I think um, to, to the media room that we were in, with all of uh, a lot of people that were Russert's co-workers and people that knew him probably pr very personally, um, when Russert got on the stand, he was really in control of the situation, and uh, he's a very likable guy, and, and I think uh, the unanimous feeling was that uh, Libby's attorney had met his match. Um, but as time wore on and as uh, the defense attorneys continued to dig up things from Russert's past, it really started to wear on him. And I found myself, as an observer, uh, very much believing what Russert had to say in the beginning and completely disbelieving him by the end. Do you feel that as a blogger and that you're not part of the mainstream media, I assume had no prior contact with Tim Russert or ever, uh, do you feel like you can be more critical of him than perhaps some of his colleagues who have worked with and, in fact, some of them for him in Washington? I think so, um, but I think more importantly for in terms of coverage of the trial was that my reaction and, and my fellow bloggers' reactions and not being professional media folks and not being in that kind of echo chamber in Washington were able to probably uh, shed a little more light on what the average juror might have been feeling at the time. And a lot of us were uh, posting very rapidly and kind of giving our gut reactions as things were going on. And I think that, um, that that might have enhanced the coverage by allowing people to kind of empathize with what the jury might be feeling. Posting rapidly. Now, that's a good point because you do... Uh, post rapidly, with which doesn't give you an opportunity. I think that's a challenge because you don't have an opportunity so much to think about it and try to put it into some sort of context or perspective. Well, that's true. And I think that there are some downsides to accepting uh, blogger coverage in a rapid fashion as a 100% package to get an idea of what happened at the trial. And I th when, when I sat in that room and I saw kind of the cream of the crop of Washington journalism and tried to think of how bloggers were, were going to bring or going to enhance the experience for the kind of the viewing public, um, it really seemed that they merged together well. That the very, um, the folks that could sit back and, and put a thoughtful experiential kind of account to it were there and many of our bloggers did it that way as well and there were some of us that did kind of a real-time posting or semi-real-time posting that allowed these people out in the world that are kind of uh, junkies on the trial and wanting to get that that quick hit from it every once in a while to um, to to see what was happening. Well, as you mentioned, uh, closing arguments today, the jury could get the, uh, could begin deliberations tomorrow. Any predictions? Well, you know, it's interesting. I my feeling after being there was that there's no possible way that that a jury is going to convict Scooter Olivia of this, of this. But when I watch the traditional media, I seem to be kind of alone <laughs> in my opinion about that. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see. I think if um, if Libby is acquitted, I think it's going to speak to uh, to that point that perhaps the echo chamber in Washington is not uh, in this particular case where they're so involved with with the trial itself. Uh, maybe not the most effective way to relay this. This, this blogging thing has really exploded in the last few years, and as I mentioned in in the introduction, it really has changed the way we cover and the way uh, consumers get news. But you know, the citizen journalist. I mean, one of the one of the criticisms you hear is anybody can set up a blog. You know, as long as you've got a laptop and can get around someplace, you can essentially go on the air, say whatever you want to say, 
and no one can challenge it. There's no accountability. Well, that's I think that's kind of a misnomer. I mean, there's a there are the same levels of accountability uh, from a legal perspective of uh, of a blogger as there are with media folks. Um, the difference in accountability is in terms of like an editor or a fact checker. Certainly, it's wide open there compared to traditional media. But I, I have a lot of faith in in the free market and the consumer um, to to kind of weed out that type of stuff. And I, while there are very uh, there are a lot of bloggers that probably are a little loose with the truth that have a big audience. In general, when you see the kind of cream of the crop rise, it's because their voice is resonating with, with a, a large audience. And that's the same as with traditional media. One of the, uh, one of the constant uh, discussions and controversies in journalism is objectivity. Some call mm -hmm. it the, the great myth mm -hmm. of, of modern journalism. I mean, a human being can't be objective. You've got feelings, thoughts, ideas, but you can be fair. It seems to be that you have a lot more leeway in, the, in that regard than, than the mainstream media. Am well, I wrong? Well, um, I, I do disagree with you in that uh, because I mm. think the mainstream media has the ability to be as unfair as it wants as well. But the, the audience and the pursuit of, of financial gain with the mainstream media leads it to be more responsible because that's what the audience wants. And I think that the effort of, of bloggers to gain audience also would at times um, uh, kind of rein them in from, being, uh, from saying things that aren't true. But, but most members of the, of the mainstream media uh, try, to, try to be fair and, and keep, avoid expressing opinions and try to give both sides of the story, whereas you don't have that kind of constraint. Well, it's interesting because I feel that the, um, the transparency of bias with most bloggers is, uh, in essence, a safer way for people to get information than the Good presumptive um, lack of bias that the mainstream media kind of portends. So as long as you know that the blogger you're reading might be writing from the left or the right or the center, you can use your own filter and. That's right. I kind of, uh, you know, compare it to someone that got their information by going down to the bar. They'd, they'd ask what happened in a particular situation mm -hmm. there. They'd look at five people. They'd understand their biases and they'd understand their background. They'd put all the information together and form their own educated opinion. As opposed to uh, people that pull their information directly from the media, I think that that we've seen a kind of a split now. We have. Fox News on one side, and we have CNN or uh, MSNBC on the other, and they both they all call each other partisan. And I think the reason those those that split has occurred is because the audience wants to see people with a little less um, uh, posturing toward being unbiased. And quickly before I let you go, uh, if uh, folks watching want to get hold of your blog, where are you? It's www.mainwebreport.com. Main, as in the state of Maine. That's right. Main Web. There it is. Main yep. Web Report. All right, Lance Dotson. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Great. Good luck in the future. All right. Thanks.